Tell me here we are facing Kurz and Ashton. It's the start of a big week for Quick. Was there three games coming up in the next eight days? Yeah, three, three what will be deemed winnable games as well. You know, we've come out of a, a really tough um, fixture list on paper. Um, and we came out smelling the roses. So now, all of a sudden, the expectancy levels go sky high, um, and you play against teams that are below you or around you. So the lads have now got that different kind of pressure, um, and the one that's Season defining now. I think these are the these are the games that people expect us to to be able to do well in and pick up points. So, the challenges are there for the boys. You know, how many points can we now pick up over the next well three, four, five games? You're not the sort of guy who sets targets. The way you you're just hoping to win as many points as possible over the next few weeks. Yeah, I don't I don't think it works. You know, if I if I said I wanted nine points, then the lads would be content with nine points. You know, they could get that in three games. So. I want the lads to win every game of football that they go into, and I think the lads need to have that mentality to go into them kind of games, um, and want and want to win. And I think every point now, I want to see the lads fighting for and not wanting to give them away because, as I say, the teams over the next five games that we're playing against, they also want these points. So um, the quality's obviously got to shine through, but I think the, the mentality has got to be right, and the complacency definitely can't come in. I know you weren't at the club the last time Quakers played Kurz and Ashton, but Quakers lost by a goal to nil. Watch this morning. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you watch it this morning, no <laughs> doubt then, you'll have noticed all the chances that were missed. Yep. And I'm sure that you'll be reminding them, the lads, or the lads who were left behind from that day, of that particular failing in front of goal. Well, Becky missed a couple of sitters that, you know, I got told I missed a sitter at Wembley, but Becky's <laughs> two headers were a lot worse than mine that day. Um, but no, we... It's a it's a different team now. Um, I think the the confidence is there for the boys. Um, they don't fear anybody in this league, um, and I want to build on this home form that we've created and and, and put on a show for the supporters. I say on Saturdays Saturday I want the lads out the traps. They had, they had a week rest last week. It was frustrating, um, but obviously off the back of the postponement, it probably did probably was the right decision. You know, not to train on Tuesday and Thursday and then go into a big game probably would have been the wrong decision but it's given us the chance to get a couple of bodies back fit and to say we go into this game uh, with a clean bill of health more or less. There's been some great home form lately though hasn't there? Kidderminster, Blythe for example it's uh, suddenly Quakers seem to be just coming to a, the best at home maybe. <clears throat> yeah and I think the fans have probably played their part in that you know I think the fans have probably been their best over the last two home games so I think when they're behind the lads and they're making noise, I think it it really does add to the um, to the excitement around the place. And say as a player, like talking as a player, there's nothing better than when your fans are behind you and cheering you on and singing your name because it does make you feel feel ten feet tall and it does give you that lift. So I urge them to come out in the numbers on Saturday. I've seen the new stands um, open and hopefully we can have a, a big gate and put on a show for them. On the playing front, Josh Heaton has signed an improved two-year contract and Josh has shown what he's capable of, hasn't he, over the last few games? He has. I think Josh um, has been a revelation since he came, um, what he got himself into the starting eleven. He was challenged not to give up his shirt and I think he's he's been determined to keep that shirt. So now, obviously, he's been rewarded with, with an improved wage um, and on a longer contract. So I think it, it definitely suits all parties and I'd like to think that this is only a stepping stone for, for Josh because Josh he's only getting started and I think um, what he's shown so far has been good I still think there's a lot more um, and I think he's got an unf unfinished business at this football club and he's I think we have as a group you know we've only just got started and I want that I don't want people to be content with what we've done I want I want more and more and I think that goes from an individual and collective basis you see more players like Josh committing their futures to the club long term and can you see even some of them going back to the Football League for example like Joe Wheatley he, he was at a Football League club yeah there's many of them you know, jo Josh Eaton was, was, at, was at a Football League club and there's lads in this group that I'm sure will go back into the pro game but they'll do it when they're ready and are they ready at the minute I think I think you have to you have to achieve something over, over a longer period of time than, than 10 games to to prove that you're ready, so the challenge is there for the lads. It's been good. I think I think there's more in the tank. Um, and saying we've got good players, we know that we want to keep hold of them. We want to build something. Um, but I'm also I'm a realist. You know, I think every player in the whole world has got a value, and we're no different as a football club.